Howdy folks, my name is Damon from RC Scum Models and today I'm back with you with a brand new kit from ICM 148 scale Bristol Beaufort Mark 1 Torpedo Bomber Finally it's been released after all this time it was scheduled for last year but due to uh, Ukraine having this conflict with Russia it's finally back out now so they're up and running good on ICM Let's take a look what we get inside this one So it's a standard ICM box, it's quite a thin box but they do a boxing box. Um, the uh, box art was going to be this box art but they've changed it to this one now. So if you're going to buy this kit it's going to be with the blue uh, C from the Mediterranean. This is basically where the aircraft was flown and based and stuff. Um, so it's 148 scale. Here are some of the schemes. We have an early one from 1930s I believe. And it goes 1940s, and then it goes into Mediterranean schemes and stuff like that. Um, we have this side. Here's the kit number. It's 48310. Um, as I say, it's boxing box. If I can get into it. One second. Right, that's the box out of the way. And now we have the uh, normal box. A bit similar to um, Zvezda as well. They do a boxing box. Um, here's your worksheet. ICM generally stick all this stuff in one bag, clear parts of the bag separately, um, so it's not too bad. Sometimes you get photo wets, sometimes you don't, I'm not sure with this one. So, no further ado, we go straight into the paperwork. So, quickly adjust the camera. So, this is the basic ICM layout, it hasn't changed. Pretty much the same way we get, get uh, information on the aircraft uh, and specs and stuff in English and Ukraine. Um, then the colour callouts. There is a slight issue with these colour callouts. I'm not sure how accurate these are because on my reference pictures and my reference material, some of the colours don't match up or don't seem right, and the names they give them seem really weird. And then some of the callouts they for Ravel and Tamir, they seem really really off. Um, you got your symbols for ICM, like times two, not to glue, drill, sand, cut parts off, etc. As you work your way along, and then you straight into everything. Here is a layout of all your sprues, so good way of checking to make sure everything's there. So there isn't a ton of parts, but it should build up nicely. You see stuff in orange or a pinky reddish colour, whatever it is on your screen. It's pink on my my manual. Um, they're not needed so you can see there's other aircraft types coming down the line there is some slight variance there are bomber versions of this and so forth but this is the torpedo version so straight off the inserts of cockpit area and internal parts and I believe this is part of the uh, um, bomb bay or part of the torpedo uh, housing um, you do get colour call as you work your way along um, but they're calling out for a really dark green but all the re my reference material that I have is the RAF normal cockpit uh, green grey colour which I have here from AK which is that minty green colour um, so I'm not sure I'm, I am going to do some more research um, but as I say they're calling out for a dark green um, and they're calling out for Tamir um, FX13 and FX13 is this one here from Tamiya and it's Japanese uh, army green which is much darker um, and so I'm really not sure if that's right but nonetheless you're working way through your fuselage inside is obviously it's the interior colour couple of detail parts we have this inset to go inside the wings strangely enough um, and then once that's done it's basically sandwiched all together which is pretty standard there isn't a ton of detail inside but there's more than enough to to see there is a little bit of glass at the front it's not a massive amount but I think you're going to see enough um, we have a nice wing spar <clears throat> there is a table I believe and some radio equipment which should be housed in the middle part of the aircraft will probably be the uh, 
um, guided build with the bombs and stuff, um, the, the navigator, not the navigator, the bomber deal and stuff or whatever. Um, so you'll be attaching your wing spar before you do any other side. This is internal as well. I believe this is to do with the cockpit area. I think this is the flight uh, instrument panel, which is here. You got decals for individual dials. So this is probably be more than enough. Paint this black, dry brush it, weather it, put your dials in. I think that would be more than enough. Should be all right. Again, the colour I've called out, they're calling out for the interior dark green, but again, I'm really not sure if that's correct. Your cushions, they're calling out for K, and the colour for K, I believe, is brown or leather brown. They're calling it for deep brown. Um, so it'd be like a leather colour. Um, this is the pilot seat at the front and the flight stick or the yoke. It's the two handle version, like a bomber, because it is a bomber. Um, this back part is to do with the uh, wheel at the back, the uh, tail dragger section, this section here. Um, you do have to paint this back bit as well, because it's, it's going to be visible. The other side of the fuselage, again, we've got this insert to go in. There is a couple of holes to drill out, doesn't say what for, but they are 0.9 mil holes to be done. Sounds it all together, pretty standard. Attaching your first piece of glass, and it's nice we have this extra framing, so it's going to be easy to attach without getting glue everywhere. Um, and then we have the side windows, there is some options for option A and option B version um, for schemes. So you've got some that have uh, circle windows, some of them have got these like doors attachment. These are machine guns, they're calling out for D and the colour D is probably gun metal. And that is yeah, gun metal. And then we have the rest of the glass going in at the front. And then the side windows, whatever option you're doing. And your guns. And then wing spars is standard, two halves. You've got your lights at the front as well. Flaps and ailerons and the wing tips. Doesn't say anything about degree angle. Um, so you might have to play around with it or a little bit of modification. But hopefully they are adjustable. I don't like them just being plain flat. And then the other side of the wing, again, repeating the process. And now you have your smaller wings at the back and then attaching all your wings. Turn the aircraft over and attaching your rudder and flaps. And these look like, is it are these the brakes, air brakes? And then you've got your engine A-cells, which are pretty standard, two halves, and the uh, internal bulkhead part. They get attached, another insert. Plus this is not only is it the uh, engine A-cell, it's also the landing gear sec section as well, so it's all one like a uh, Lancaster, so standard engine A-cells, there's the markings. we we'll get to them in a minute. Landing gear section, this is if you want the landing gear down, two halves for wheels, standard landing gear, it's that strut triangle landing gear. Um, looks fair, fairly sturdy, it should build up nicely. Um, they are calling out for C parts, C is probably black or aluminum or silver. C is natural silver, they're calling out for, yeah, that's what they're calling out for. So work your way along, which is pretty standard. You've got two of those to make for left and right. These are your, your doors. And now you've got your engines and propeller system. Uh, pretty standard. And then you've got your pipes at the back. So again, there's two of those to make. And then attaching your engines. And you've got your parts of your cowling to be attached. These look like air vents as well. Now this is the cowling. I mean, it looks like we have two types of cowling. I can't see what the difference is in the picture, but they are. What, what are we looking at? Why is there a difference? Right, so, no, sorry, the cowling is the same, but it's the uh, front part. The front part is either copper or is it silver? So H and J, H is brass front so the, the the front of the engine nacelles are brass or 
olive, silver. So, so that's the difference. And then left and right is pretty standard. Uh, this section here, <coughs> excuse me, is the gun, uh, the turret gun, the gunner. That could be slotted into place. Obviously, you don't forget that you want to paint the inside as well, the green, and then do your parts. There is an insert to go out the back, so you may want to paint some of this first before sliding it in. Because don't forget, you're going to want to mask all of this up. There is a template in, in the instructions, which is nice. Um, so this is for the torpedo rack. And this one here is just inserts for, the, uh, for it to be closed up. Because you can have the bomb doors on and just close it up completely. So this is the inserts for the side of the... Uh, Torpedo bay basically, and this is the closed version with the doors all closed up. Um, this is the other side, left and right. Um, this is the torpedo, it's going to be attached, and this is what it would look like if you're having it all closed. And then we've got some more gunners, gun positions. This is the uh, no, chin gun that goes at the front, a couple of arrows, pitot tubes as you work right around. And now this section here is basically, you can buy this as a separate kit as well as a torpedo. You don't have to display your torpedo on the aircraft as well. You can display it like it is on this little dolly, which is a nice touch. So you've got your two halves, you've got your fin, which is basically like a, made of wood, I believe. And then this is the dolly section, so you, that's a nice touch. So you can have a little diorama as well of it being loaded. <clears throat> now this is the layout for all your section for your canopy uh, mask. You don't get a canopy mask, but they give you a template, so basically you get uh, some masking tape, stick it over there carefully, draw out draw your segments and you then cut them out. Um, but I will end up uh, using Eddard masks when it gets released. It is a nice touch they do this. I wish more manufacturers would do this for people that want to do it that way. And now we go stay in your first marking option. Now this is, again, some description sees on the on the colours. This is obviously standard RAF uh, earth and dark green, but they're calling it something completely different. The underside is a silver. <clears throat> this is 1939, so this is early early war or pre-war. This section here, 1940s, so we're getting into Standard camouflage again, green over brown. The underside again, they're calling out for sky blue, but it's actually more the sky color, which is more of the mint y type of greeny color, which is actually this color, not the blue. So, again, some slight discrepancy of, of the colors. I know this one here is 1940s again. Uh, brown over green, but instead of the uh, the uh, sky color, we've got a black. So this is basically coming into a night version or night variant. And now we again we go back to green over brown, and then we've got the sky underside again, 1941. Um, and like I say, these are um, I believe they're all based in Mediterranean as well. Um, and then this one is basically like uh, a little bit later, nope sorry, 1941 still but this is black underside but this is more of the uh, sea colours which would be the green and dark sea grey I believe so it's M and L, L like I say they're calling out for dark sea green but it's more uh, RF green and then the M colour is dark grey, but it's, I believe it's um, dark sea grey, I think, more dark. So just check your references just to get your colours right. Um, I do like this version, though. I do like this scheme more than, than all the others. <coughs> now here are your markings from YCM, pretty nicely done on this blue background. They are very sharp. 
they are quite glossy. Carafilm is only on two letters. This is a single R, W single, W, uh, MW is two, X is a single. These are twos, these are twos, the H are separately. These round doors are all separately. There's no carafilm on the edges at all. They're just completely colourless, like, oh, sorry, completely coloured. So there's no carafilm right on the edges. There's carafilm in between these letters, which is pretty typical. The R is very tiny carafilm around that, same as the W. These are all your tails, these are all your standard roundels. These are your no steps and stuff like that. These are your markings for your um, instrument panels. So again, they look pretty good to me. Nice and bright and vibrant. Even the ICM logo is a decal as well, so if you wish to use that for something, which is actually a nice touch. So is this. The uh, Bristol Beaufort, you could, if you were making a stand or the little plaque, you could use that as well because it is a decal. <clears throat> now let's get into the kit. So everything gives in one bag. Actually, it's on the bottom side. Not to rustle too much. So here are your clear parts. So we we'll get into that in a minute. So everything is here, hopefully. This is why I don't like parts in being in one bag, because parts get knocked off the sprue, can be get broken. So hopefully it's not an issue that part. And right, now here is the fuselage halves. It's not a very big aircraft or a big bomber. It is probably come under the category of medium bombers maybe. So it's typical ICM, there's more than enough detail there, the uh, panel lines are really fine, there isn't a ton of rivets, so if you wish to rivet it, you're going to have to redo it all yourself, but it's a bit like Airfix, they give you the basics and it's just enough there, and then it's down to you to uh, how far you want to go with it and make it better. So here's the de detail. And then the internals, there are a couple of ejector pins in certain places. Now we have our wings, so there's the upper and lower. Again, it's nicely done. The plastic is always nice and smooth. lower wing section is nicely done we have a little one here this is the uh, parts of the uh, um, gunner section for the turret and then part of the uh, bomb rack, or torpedo rack, I should say. So here is the detailed parts. This is going to be seats, parts of your engine cowlings, flaps and ailerons. This is more cowlings, more flaps. Cockpit detail section, this is for your torpedo to sit into. Here are some of the windows, pilot seat. So here are the uh, foot pedals, here's those parts of the um, cowling and now here are some of the seats this is cockpit internals these two sections here because they go together here are your flaps this has kind of a fabric section in it which is nicely done here are some of those smaller windows 
Here's yeah, some of those cockpit sections. There's that part part of the pilot seat. There's another small seat there. Here's the small wheel at the back. This is all molded as one part. Here's a cushion for one of the seats. Not bad at all. So it looks like we have two of these because this is going to be engine detail. Yeah, so again, this is why I don't like stuff in one bag. Another part knocked off. This is the engine. Just come away from here. Especially all these detail parts, you want to be super careful and they can get easily snapped. Especially these pipes as well, this is for the engine. So this is why I don't like everything in one bag. More detailed parts, these are all very fragile parts, even down to the guns. Engines don't look too bad. They should take a nice wash and whatever. The uh, propellers or prop is very nicely and crisp. Got unfortunately it's two piece wheels I'm never a fan of. Um but they look pretty good though. Especially the reason why I don't like them is especially when they have a tread pattern and it comes to taking out that seam line, you end up losing all the tread. I know it could end up calling it yeah it's gonna be wear on the tire or whatever, but it's still annoying. I like my resin wheels. It's it, they look much crisper and sharper and they're just easier to work with. But if that's what all you've got then they will work but I'm never a fan of two-piece wheels this is the pipe here for the engine these are struts for your landing gear again they look pretty pretty good to me quite sturdy hopefully it should hold the aircraft up nicely this is part of the engine All right support bracket again these are more landing gear segments nicely nicely done quite beefy it would be on your real aircraft I should imagine Pitot tubes and aerials, so there is two of these, and then we have a small sprue here, which is which you'll get on its own if you're going to buy a torpedo, which is basically a small kit on its own. So it's the torpedo and, and the uh, um, dolly, which is nicely done. Again, the colours are called out for the torpedo. They're calling out for like a silver, but reference pictures and there's a museum. It's got a uh, bow fort in it and it's got torpedoes on display and they've got theirs in black and the red nose and again I just I don't know what is correct this is probably the biggest sprue in there and this is quite chunky parts this is all the engine nacelles more wings and flaps this is the walkway internal parts or um, your bomb bay plus you'll be your torpedo section this is what this section is for for the torpedo to sit into so it's slightly different these are your flaps there's no ejector pins inside these at all this is what all these little tabs are for to try and keep them off this is molded as one part this is your rudder this is molded as one piece internals these are nicely done more engine nacelles at the top here these are those inserts this is I don't know what that's for these are two halves Go together. This is a wing spar. This is your part of your instrument panel. These are parts of your inserts for your engine nacelles, the uh, bulkheads inside that. More flaps. Parts of your closed doors. Yeah, nicely done as well. So there isn't a ton of parts. That is pretty much it for kit wise. And then the last sprue is your clear. This is all your windows, canopy lights I have to say that is pretty good it's probably some of the quite quite sharp clean so, so these sections here at the front which is all foggy is basically um, part of the uh, fuselage 
again around here you've got foggy sections which is fuselage framing so there is quite a large framing this is that bulge at the front where one of the, the guns go through these are your lights here's part of your turret this is part of the other turrets and front of the aircraft nose wing tips strangely enough done in clear possibly they've done that because of the um, lights so you're going to have to mask off a little bit um, these are windows windows um, and this is one of your lights on your wings so that is pretty good it should be um, visible so there you are my friends another kit from ICM beautiful kit as always um, as I say the kit's been scheduled for a long time and now it's finally released hopefully we can start to get ICM back up and running and get all their kits due to be released and helicopters and stuff like that because I am waiting for a lot of stuff from them so good on ICM I do like your stuff comment, uh, like comment subscribe and I catch you next time mm.